Today we're doing something slightly different from usual. I'm not gonna go over a single topic tutorial. Instead, I'm just going to take you through my entire working process for designing, modeling, texturing and animating a character. Lately, I've been doing a lot of character work for the enemies in my game. And I figured there's so many things that are not worth making an entire video about that are still valuable information. So hence this video existing. You'll have seen the finished result in the thumbnail. Obviously, since I am live commentating this, I don't know what the final result will look like, but I'm gonna go for a spider looking robotic artificial kind of being. And so my first step is to open up Stable Diffusion to generate some reference images that I can used to work off of. So I start by typing, I want a spider, it needs to be a robot, I want it to be made of stone, because that's the general vibe that I'm going for with my enemy designs. Uh, probably glowing eyes, I do wonder if Stable Diffusion will actually give the spider eight eyes. It's got real trouble with uh, fingers, so I don't know about eyes. And then I'll just generate one single image to see what the kind of vibe is that I'm gonna get out of this. We then get this as a result, and that's definitely not what I want. So I'm going to add in eight legs. That's a little bit closer, but it's focusing a little bit too much on having one eye, which is weird because I'm specifically stating eight eyes. So uh, negative prompt, we're going to say single eye or two eyes, uh, two legs and four legs, because those will be the most common things that it's going to try to generate. So we're going to say, you don't want to do that. And we're going to actually increase this CFG skill so that it's a little bit more respectful of our prompts. We're getting somewhere, but it's still not looking like what we want. And even though it's not technically correct, I'm going to add bug and insect because that's probably going to trigger it to go more towards what a general spider would look like. Let's remove the robot and see if that maybe makes things just look a little bit more spider-like. Because so far, there we go. That's starting to look a little bit more like a spider. And that's actually a pretty good one. So now that I've got a prompt where I can trust that it's going to somewhat reasonably give me a handful of useful things, I'm going to change the batch size to being four and the batch count to being 16. This way it will generate 64 images at once. I could very well increase this to 32 and make it generate 128 images at a time. You know what? I'm actually just going to do that. And it's gonna altogether take uh, between 10 to 15 minutes, at least on my computer. And then I will have a bunch of images that I can use as a reference when I'm modeling. All right, so the spider thing ended up being a bit more of an issue than I thought. So out of like 500-ish images, uh, these are the six that I got. And then I got some real spiders and some normal illustrations off of Google to have a bit more of a baseline for the anatomy. Which finally gets us back into Blender, where I'll start off by deleting everything in the scene. And then we should probably start on the body itself, which is two spheres together, really. So let's add in the first sphere here, squash it down a little bit, and maybe, let's see, maybe that's a little too flat. Let's shake that smooth and see if we duplicate that and make it a bit bigger for the back one. Yeah, we're definitely going to want to have this one be a fair bit bigger. I think both of them probably... Um, this may be a, a little bit higher as well. And then I'm actually going to subdivide both of these because they're a little too chunky at the moment. That's quite a bit better. Let's just feel free to apply both of those subdivision surface modifiers and get started on having the rough approximation of the legs. I think 
putting that down will give the entire thing the most shape right away. So let's add a cylinder to begin with. We'll add a mirror modifier and use the main body here as the mirroring object. And then we can just rotate these around, make them a lot smaller. And we can get started making this, let's see, one here, two there, and one there, right? So we can also mirror in the Y axis. And then we're going to transform in the local space. So we'll go the Z axis, pull them out a little bit, and we're going to... And going back to global, have them go up. And this is all more or less just to get a general feel. None of this is going to be particularly final. And here we're going to look at this specific image over here. Where we can see that these legs have three segments, right? One coming from the body, then another segment here, and another segment here. So what we're going to do is we're going to add joints to both of these things. So what I'll do is for now i'll add a simple cylinder i'll scale that down quite a bit you can select the separate mesh here by just hovering over it and pressing l that will select all the linked vertices or edges or faces so everything that is physically connected to it and then we're going to turn this around apparently i've got two of them somehow make them a bit bigger and this is how we're going to be making the joints is i'm going to inset both of these faces by the same amount and then i'm going to press x and delete both of those faces go into edge select mode selecting both of these edge loops and then we're going to bridge the edge loops and now We've got this donut shape. We could have gone for a Toros as well, but I like the harder edges that we get in this method. So that's why we do that. And now going back into the legs themselves, we're going to scale this down a little bit and move it so that it's inside of our newly made joints. And then of course we can scale this and do whatever we want with it. I'm actually going to be adding a extra edge loop here that we're just going to slide along here. And that way we can actually scale down this bit. I've uh, I've hidden this geometry here. That gives us a little bit more freedom to place this thing in a position where it should be without it clipping through and stuff like that. And let's add a couple more edge loops anyway uh, to add a little bit of curvature. So we'll select this loop over here. Turn on proportional editing. And then we'll just ever so slightly bend this. And then we'll just select everything here. Shift D to duplicate. And now we've got a second segment to work with. So we can rotate this around as a whole. And obviously the first thing we're going to need to do is make this entire thing, the entire leg, a bit smaller. So we'll just scale that down. But now in order for this joint to realistically work, there's going to have to be a sort of axle that goes through this that then connects to the rest of this leg, right? That's how this joint works. And that's also what we're going to need to do to attach to this object over here. So for now, what I will do is I will select these two things and then separate by selection. Eventually, this is going to all move back into being one object. But for now, this makes it easier. It still keeps the modifier on it. But now, if we go uh, back into object mode real quick, uh, we can see that we have this as a separate object, which is just useful for being able to move it around a little bit easier. Eventually, we're going to all mix and match this together to be one object again anyway. So let's add a new cylinder again. Make it a whole bunch smaller. Rotate it 90 degrees in the X direction and then probably like 45 degrees or minus 45 degrees rather in the Z and just see how that fits in this. That should fit reasonably well, not quite. We want this to be as parallel as possible, so do be careful about that and just scale it down a bit to see how well it fits. All right, that seems to fit reasonably well now. 
Of course, this is not particularly physically accurate because this thing is now just floating in here. Nobody's going to come close enough in here for that to actually matter, so don't worry too much about that. And now we can simply just extrude or move these out a little bit. And now we're going to have to do something a bit funny because we need to put our 3D cursor in a reasonable position here to curve this around. So let's try to put it around here. So I've put it on here now, which is not ideal, but I think it'll do. 180 degrees. And this 3D cursor doesn't actually need to be in the perfect position because you can play around a little bit with the exact center point that you want. So this looks pretty good. And then we can just extrude this. And in theory, with auto mirror, I always get X and Y mixed up. Turns out what I needed was a auto mirror in the Z direction, so it literally didn't matter. These were merged together, and now we can also, let's see, it's going to be a bit tricky to get this working properly. Uh, mix these together, hopefully, let's see, in that direction, there we go. Let's hide this, just so that I can see what I'm actually doing. And of course, this is uh, quite clunky at the moment, but we should be able to select this edge loop first and foremost make this a little bit better and then with proportional editing make this all just a little bit smaller and if we say connect it only that's a nice little trick it'll only influence things that are directly connected to it so you can see this part over here while it's in range it's not really getting affected too much because it's not directly connected to the piece that I'm scaling down. Its influence isn't being decided by the circle of influence here. It's actually being decided by how far away it is from the thing that I'm influencing. And I think in general, this just needs to be quite a bit smaller, which then results in this needing to be quite a bit smaller as well. Felt a little bit big to begin with. Probably should have realized that a bit sooner. Probably not a bad thing if the outer ring is a little bit bigger though because that'll also make it easier to mask this thing clipping into it, which I'm aware is slightly sloppy to work this way to begin with, but it works for me, so you just shut up. Well, now, this is definitely without a doubt too wide now, so going into wireframe mode and just selecting all these vertices, we can move them closer. And at this point, what we've made is pretty much just a torus. Yes, I am aware. Now, with all those changes being made, these extra second segments that we've just made are kind of worthless. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm actually going to copy over this thing first. Add a new mirror modifier to that as well. And actually put this on the body. Because now we've got a decent way to connect these things up, right? So we can go back into edit mode here. Duplicate this stuff. And with a little bit of uh, finagling, get that matching up there. And then it's just a matter of, and this is easier than it sounds, or more difficult than it sounds, I should say, getting this to properly connect to that. Without it looking like other shit, preferably. Well, it certainly ain't perfect, but it's something, so... Let's see if we maybe added a subdivision surface, if that would clean up my mess. Well, it makes these things look less rigid, which I'm not sure I like. Yeah, most what mostly what it does is it, it messes up with, uh, with my rings here. I like the fact that these have sharp edges, though they probably should be at least a little bit beveled. So we can just add a bit of a bevel manually to them instead. That looks pretty decent so far. Okay, so now what we've got is we've got a system that we can use to link these things together. So what we can do is we can just copy this over, simply rotate it around a little bit. I think we can actually remove this upper one altogether. So let's remove these vertices and then we can simply add that into there. And then of course, without a shadow of a doubt, all this. I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make it smaller. I think that will do the trick just fine and connect it like that. 
and then it's easier to scale this back up a little bit. Not too much, but a little bit. Look, ideally we would want these uh, faces and vertices to actually connect. That would be best, but you can't always have what's best, now can you? And that adds our second segment to our leg. Probably want this ring to be down lower a little bit. And finally, I think we can apply this mirror modifier here. So that we can join these two things together as one object, which is separate from what I was just talking about. The fact that we ideally would want these faces to connect. It's just not going to happen. And one last time, we're going to duplicate this, move it down to roughly that last ring we've made. This bottom ring we're going to delete because the final segment here is going to be the foot itself, which we're going to connect a little something like this. And that was definitely the quickest and easiest one to do. Um, it's a little bit high up compared to the body. Obviously, we would want this to be below the body. But as soon as we've got this rigged up, we can just raise the body. And with this being driven by inverse kinematics, it will stay in the same position and everything will be fine. Hopefully. Now, let's select all of these objects per leg and join them together. And now we can see our entire leg is one object. All four of them, in fact. But a spider has eight legs and not four. So if we go back to our reference here, we can see that it heavily changes between spiders. I mean, these ones are obviously not great reference for actual anatomy. Um, and neither is this because it's a illustration. Based on this one, the legs are about equal size. So at that point, it's literally as easy as just copying this over, moving them to here and rotating them around a little bit and there we go which i think that brings us to the eyes as the next logical place to uh, go it looks like spider eyes come in a variety of different configurations so i can be pretty creative with what i want to do and i will not be so what we're going to do is i'm just going to add a uv sphere shade smooth of course we're going to make that absolutely tiny and we're just going to put that on its face you know what's up we're going to go for a mirror modifier mirror it along the body and then we're just going to add in a couple more eyes and the exact configuration i am not 100 sure what i want to end up with but i think this actually looks pretty good Maybe we can make them a little closer together. I want some room here to have uh, a couple of fangs. Because I think that does give the entire thing a little bit more structure. Uh, but this probably, like this specific eye, probably could do with being a little higher up. Let's add a cylinder. Scale it down quite a bit. We rotate it around the X. In 90 degrees we rotate it about 45 degrees in that direction scale it down even more and simply shade smooth uh, with auto and then simply extrude scale extrude scale extrude scale probably scale this down a little bit or move it along there there we go then selecting the second to last edge loop here with our proportional editing turned on we're going to rotate this make it a little more fang like and we can rotate it around its own axis a little bit more we do need to probably bevel these out quite a bit <laughs> now that i look at it a little closer because that looks a little chunky uh, that's quite a bit better already actually what does this look like when we mirror it along the body actually that's that's pretty good let's go into the body itself here real quick and just move this along the local z a tiny bit more so 
that if we rotate this, it doesn't clip through, right? We're probably going to animate this a little bit in like the idle and running animations. So it's nice to have a little bit of room to work with here. And just like that, I think we have the basic shapes for our spider. That being said, now that we have all of this anyway, right? We can maybe increase the height of the body a little bit while keeping the legs at the same position. Increase the size of the legs as well, maybe. That's starting to look like a scary fucking spider. Okay, that's the base. <laughs> now we're going to have to add a little bit of like world building character because in the end, this is going to be a energy generating um, or, or a field force field generating enemy, which uh, will just like walk up into the middle of a battle and just generate a a force field around itself to damage you. That that's its entire thing, right? So it's going to need to have some kind of like generator on probably the back here, and the entire feeling of this thing is going to have to have to do a probably like electricity so what i'm thinking is probably have all these eyes connected up to some kind of like wires that then go up to the back of its body maybe where it then splits back up into two separate wires with a generator each and from there all the fancy stuff we will of course do in engine That'll also give him some more interesting markings. So let's see what does the uh, the geometry for that. It's not very nice, is it? <laughs> um, maybe that's more of a texturing thing anyway. I don't know. Okay, let's see. If I select this and this, I can extrude uh, along normals. I can extrude these inwards. Then I can inset them quite a bit and extrude them back out and from there we can extrude and scale and extrude and scale and extrude and scale and extrude maybe scale them up a little bit again extrude scale them up a little bit more again and extrude and probably scale them down right that actually works decently well, I think. Maybe the first extrusion was a little bit too much. So yeah, I think I think that works. I think that works reasonably well. Now, the only thing is, I would very much like this to be a little bit more symmetrical. Because <laughs> these are very, very twisted. Um, but that honestly, like, if I just turn you around like that... That does the trick, doesn't it? Yeah, no, that that is that is great. Maybe we can even like angle them back a little bit. Yeah, that doesn't work as well, does it? It's not ideal, but I do want these like little channels almost of energy to run throughout the entire body of this thing in the form of actual geometry and i actually think that the shapes of the faces on the icosphere while initially seeming like a not very useful mess will end up helping this thing into looking somewhat decent i do want it to be symmetrical though I'm doing this partly because I want there to be physical detail on this thing, but also because this does make texturing a little bit easier, at the very least. And it's not like this thing is particularly high detail as it is, so I can get away with a little bit of extra geometry, I feel. The only thing that I'm not sure of is if this is going to be like an animated texture kind of deal. On one hand, I do feel like that probably would be kind of neat i'm also disregarding the entire thing about it having to be symmetrical because i realize now that in fact a icosphere is not symmetrical to begin with so who gives a crap right okay so if we do this and we bevel that seems pretty good and then i can 
extrude along face normals and inset them. That actually looks pretty cool. I I like that more than I thought I would. I like that. We're gonna do the same for this, I think. But with the slight modification that we actually will change these vertices around to fit the eyes that we have made. I think that is a decent idea. Let's do this with the selection box instead. That way we can also have some of these like pathways between the eyes and I think that would be kind of neat to have. So let's have between all of the eyes we want to have these paths. Ah, that sucks because I need to have this. Uh, I guess that'll do. And then this one will be a little bit more random, I think. I think that makes a certain amount of sense. And the only reason I'm saying that is because... It feels like this icosphere has gotten more fucked up to begin with. <laughs> It's not really because anything makes more sense, it's just because it is easier for me to just pretend like that is the case. Also, a little bit of randomness in your design is not a bad thing at all. Matter of fact, it's actually probably a good thing, because otherwise things feel a little too predictable in a design. And that's generally not a great thing, having things feel too predictable. Too chaotic is also a bad thing, of course, but... There needs to be a, a happy middle ground between the two. And that is what I'm trying to find here. I do think that this is pretty good. So let's try to bevel that. Uh, something weird is going on here. I don't like that. If we don't... Ah, uh, yeah, so that's probably not the kind of look I'm going for, is it? First and foremost, this needs to auto smooth. Yeah, it's uh hold on. This actually needs to go back up. Hmm. Maybe if we make these paths in particular all a little smaller, maybe that'll do something good. Yeah, that's 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 not it. <laughs> uh but maybe. This can still work as long as these lines aren't part of the entire thing. Right, so maybe we just frame the eyes in the insets. Maybe that works a little bit better. And maybe we can make a little bit of a mouth out of this. That would be kind of neat. And auto smoothing. That works quite a bit better. And that does add quite a bit of needed detail. It, it also makes this feel a little bit more like a, a panel. Making it feel a bit more digital in some sense. Which I like. So, yeah, no, I'm happy that I tried this out. This actually, uh, that's pretty good. I like that. And a very big thank you to all of my Patreons. You can see them on screen right now. If you want to help out supporting the channel, there's a link down below in the description to the Patreon page.